Polygonal logos are a thing now. A lot of brands and people use it. You know, making a logo with only a few basic shapes. Low poly, or whatever you want to call it. It's very understandable. Simple shapes are easy to read from afar, and it's a good way to represent something. I want to try my hand at that. Well, hello there. I'm Detroit. I'm not that good at making logos. I'll be the first to admit. I have a logo of my own, but it's a shape I came up with years ago, even before I thought about making a YouTube channel, and apart from showing briefly in my intro, it doesn't come up too often. Also, I'm not that interested about making logos, but this is what this digital drawing turned into, so I'm rolling with it, baby. I want to draw a toucan. I like birds, and mostly toucans. They're my favorite animals. I found this great pic I used for reference on Google, and I opened it up in Photoshop. Since I'm not gonna represent the bird accurately, I don't mind drawing on top of it for the sketching phase. This is not tracing, so that's okay. It's more about understanding the shape and the different blocks that makes the bird. For that purpose, tracing is good. Please don't trace a complex drawing and call it your own though. What I'm looking to is finding the right angles for the polygonal shape. I decide to use a large rectangle shape at an angle for the body of the bird, with one angle straight in the front and one in the back. For the wings, I'm making sort of a pyramidal shape, a fancy triangle really, with thought of a shoulder up top and that becomes smaller at the bottom where the wing is flat against the body. For the head, it's just more of the same, a little bit more complicated this time. The goal is simply to make it all polygonal and nice looking, even the branch. I'll say, at first I had a different idea for this toucan to go. Still polygonal, but not quite the same. I wanted to put a toucan inside a bag, or a prison trap. Here's the short sketch I came up with two minutes before I recorded this version. All of this to say that if one attempt at an artwork doesn't quite get you there, two can. Alright, that was all for the pun. You're welcome. As you can see, during the sketching part, I didn't really follow the reference too closely. Because if you want a good logo type image, you don't want to go into too much detail. That also means you have to work both the positive and negative space. For example, look at the shape between the toucan and the branch. The way the beak slightly overlaps the branch closes off the shape in between. That's better than leaving it open in my mind. And the negative shape itself is interesting, with angles both going in and out of it. You see, an interesting shape has slight variations that make it interesting. If you don't want to be too minimalist and have just like a simple triangle, you need some variations. If you take just the outline of the whole drawing, you have a big triangle overall. The beak is straight, then there's the branch, and lastly the body of the bird from head to tail. Now add the end of the branch crossing the tail. That's variation. Make that wing pop out a bit at the shoulder. That's variation as well. Plus, because it's a toucan, I know it will be easy to draw the eye to a natural center point to the piece, aka the eye of the toucan, which is at the crossing of two major straights, just like I said. And one way to draw the eye even more to that will be colors, but we're not quite there yet. First, I want to add details in the line. Now that the basic line art is complete, I'm going in on a separate layer with a smaller brush. I'm drawing individual feathers, without being too precious about it. The only thing that matters is that I'm twisting the direction of the feathers depending on the face of the polygon they are on. For example, the face that is the toucan's neck is oriented differently than the top of the wing, so even if the same feathers are going from one side to the next, their orientation changes. However, remember, this is just detailing. Doesn't matter if I'm making a regular pattern or not. It will only be seen a little bit. To be honest, I knew I wanted that to just be a little color touch, not an important part of the whole drawing. Because I have the main lines on one layer and the rest in another, it's now pretty easy for me to use the one tool to select an area, or a face of the polygon, to fill it with colors. A combination of the bucket tool and the one tool later, and I have every face colored on a different layer, so that if I want to, I can adjust them later on. And now you can see how the eye is easily drawn to, well, the eye of the toucan. The white area around the neck and the orange beak draws you in naturally. To complement all that, this is where I decide to color the background a nice soft green. I don't want all the colors to be too bright and distracting. 
I like a nice faded pastel green. At that point, I don't really know what to do with the line art. I have it on one layer, but I'm not sure I want to keep it. It's when I remove it momentarily that I realize the colors haven't been put behind the line art, which is normal because that's how the one tool works with my settings. And I think it looks cool. So let me select all the line art and erase everything that appears under it, just in case. That is the look I want. All polygons separated by empty lines. Now I'm done with the basic stuff. What I want is details. I've already done the feathers, now I want swirlies on the branch. Simple soft lines to make it look nice and make it wood-like. Again, no need to be too precious with each and every individual line. I shouldn't draw the eye to it, just complement the piece from afar. Give it a softer color and voila! Same for the feathers. Now it's time to make them a bit purple, which works well with the green behind because the colors are opposite but on the same level of not being distracting too much in comparison to the orange. In simpler terms, I think it looks nice. And as is common with details, I can't stop, so I also drew lines on the beak, in blue, to recall the eye of the toucan, and because orange and blue will always have my love. Soft light blue is also what I chose for the background design. I'm not gonna draw a whole jungle, so a few lines is enough. About now, do you remember I said it was important to have all the different colors on different layers? Because it's gradient time, baby. I basically add a gradient to everything. Depending on where light might come from, or just to make it interesting. I add lighter or darker grays everywhere on this bad boy. That's a choice that could be contested, but I like the softer touch compared to the harsh shape. It's like the most basic kind of blending, without really being blending. I also play a bit with the layer style and opacity on the colored highlights for the finishing touches. And there you have it! A nice illustration that can easily serve as a logo to whatever ecological comfy company you have, attempting some greenwashing even though your product is at the base of major deforestation that should be condemned. Or if you're like me, that's just an aesthetically pleasing toucan. Do like the video if you enjoyed this rank process and leave a comment below. Maybe tell me which animal you'd like to see me draw. As long as it's not a caterpillar, I'll think about it. Subscribe to watch more of my content as it comes out. Every Sunday is a new digital drawing video and every Thursday is an ink doodle. You can find all of my art, sketches, works in progress and warm-up drawings included on my Instagram at d3-sd. Hit me up on Twitter as well, at Detroit. I'll see you in the next video. Bye!